In this video, I turn my small home studio into a laser-filled mini disco. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And today, join me in my small home studio. Except this isn't going to be a studio for long because I'm going to turn it into a mini disco. Now for a disco we need things like smoke, that's coming, and of course lights. I've got lots of lights to play with. I've got the excellent Flashpoint Evolve 200. We'll use that towards the end. And I've got smaller lights as well, like this little guy. This is my pocket LED torch, which is rather good fun. But the thing I'm really excited about is this. This is a small home laser system. Yeah, sounds exciting. Watch this. Wow, look at that effect. Yeah, it's good in it. However, what we're gonna do is fill the room with smoke, we'll beam the laser through, and we'll use this as a laser background, and it should look amazing. Now you might have noticed I said the word laser in there, and that might be worrying. However, there's lots of health and safety information printed on the laser and in the box. Read it, it's really good advice. This laser is 70 milliwatts in power. Well, technically there's two, a red and a green one. Having said that, it's split into hundreds of small spots, so each one is pretty low in power. Nonetheless, there's no way of knowing whether the power that it's claiming to be is accurate. So my advice is to buy from a brand that is known, from a supplier that you trust, like Adorama, for example. Now there's still some things I would not do. I would not stare straight in from close range to the source of the laser. That's not gonna end well. And I wouldn't put my camera this close pointing into the laser either. Now I have pointed my camera at the laser and it's been fine, but my advice would be, make sure you have something between you, the laser and your camera. That's what we're gonna do when we shoot these pictures. So having said that, let's get a model in, let's get a light in and let's get shooting. So to help me with this shoot today, I've been joined once again by Beth, who's going to be the model for this. And as you can see, we've got the studio set up as a really dark black background. In fact, for this shoot to work, you want your studio not to have, just have a black background, but it needs to be dark, really dark, a bit like this. But as you can see, if we do that, well, it doesn't work well for the video. So what we're going to do is we'll shoot the video with the lights turned on and then I'll shoot the photos that you see on screen with the lights turned off. So let's talk about camera settings. I'm using my Olympus EM1 Mark II and I've got a wide angle lens but the key for this is the fact that it's an f2.8 lens. I need as big an aperture as possible to gather all of the light from this fairly dim laser. I'm going to use an ISO of 400 and that leaves me one more thing, the shutter speed, which will be a quarter of a second or thereabouts. Now a quarter of a second means that I need a tripod to get a stable shot and it also means that Beth can't move during the shoot. I need to get her to stay still when I press the shutter, otherwise she'll come out soft and blurry. Okay, that's everything set. Let's get some smoke in this room and we'll start taking some pictures. So Sam's ready to put some smoke in the room, but a word of warning, you want to build your smoke up slowly. Don't just suddenly fill the room with smoke, and that's quite a powerful smoke machine for a small studio. Also, I'm not looking for textured smoke. I'm actually looking for haze. So I don't want to shoot straight away. I want the smoke to dissipate, and that should give a much better look to the laser beams. So Sam, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's try a bit of smoke. So that's perfect, just enough smoke to get us going. Okay, let's turn the lasers on. So I need to make sure that Beth is blocking the path of the laser back to my camera. So this laser wants to be right in behind Beth's back, like that. And I'm gonna try and center it up the best I can on her, which is tricky to see from this point of view. So let's go around the back of the camera, see how that looks. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, let's take a test shot like this to check the exposure. That looks perhaps just a little bit underexposed, so I'm gonna bump up the ISO and try again. And that looks much better. However, do bear in mind that when we add more smoke, 
and we add in more lights, that the exposure might change. So be prepared to adjust your exposure as the smoke in the room changes. So this laser has very limited controls, but one of the controls is the ability to make the lights move or stay static. Now at the moment I've got the lights static. Let's have a look at this. Here we go, Beth. And that looks really nice. You get very sharp edged lines from the lasers. However, with a long exposure, like a quarter of a second, I can actually change the settings here and make use of that exposure time by getting the, the beams to move around. Now, the way this particular laser is designed, some of the laser lights move and one or two are static. Watch how this changes the shot. Okay, Beth, once more. As you can see, what we have is some sharp lines, and then during that quarter of a second exposure, we have some blur from the moving laser lines as well. And that works really nicely. Okay, so let's take some shots. Well, the fog is really starting to build in the studio, which is exactly what we need for the laser, although it might make it a little bit more difficult to see us in the video. However, I'm gonna add an extra light. So we've got the laser going. I'm also gonna turn on the little LED torch in the background. I'm gonna put that on a nice low power, and that should give a lovely kind of glow to go with the lasers. Okay, let's take these pictures. So far we've shot silhouettes and we've had to ask Beth to stay absolutely still, but that's not much fun as a model. We like a bit of movement in our pictures. However, if she moves, she's gonna be blurry. And I could put more lights into the shots. For example, the Evolve 200 here has a built-in LED. That will put some light onto Beth's face so we can see her, but it's not enough to freeze the movement. If you wanna freeze the movement, you need flash. Now I know what you're thinking, flash, isn't that really, really bright? Well, yes it is, but we're gonna have the Evolve 200 on its lowest possible flash power, one 128th, and hopefully that should be enough with the ISO 400, the F2.8, the shutter speed, well that's gonna give us a combination of both flash and ambient, and should give us some really good moving pictures. Okay, let's take a few pictures like this, see how it goes. quite a while to get the smoke out of the studio but it was worth the effort because the pictures well they were great fun to shoot and they look amazing now if you missed it don't forget to watch the health and safety advice at the beginning of this video if you want to have a go yourself but more importantly of course if you've enjoyed it leave me a comment below and subscribe for more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters right here on Adorama TV I'm Gavin Hoey thanks for watching